Hello, it's, it's uh, Robert here, Robert Skinner. I was uh, speaking to Elder Green earlier. Yes, speaker. Um, yes, thank you. Um, as I'm trying to find out and, and speak to various people and find out, um, I've just spoken to somebody about Colossians 2.9, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Um, I'm getting a little confused as to what is the position of the church, Bible Way Church, on, on Jesus, on the Godhead, and, and on verses such as Colossians 2.9. Um, I'll just read the verse, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I would understand that him is referring to the Son. Um, I think it's a contrast between the Father and the Son, um, for in him the Son dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, or the modern Bibles will say in a bodily form, uh, New American Standard and NIV, and that the ones that use the Nestle's text. Um, so the Son is deity, Godhead simply means deity, divinity, in a, godly, in, in a bodily form, whereas the Father is the fullness of deity who's not in a bodily form. What I'm confused about is the word, the interpretation dwells in, because I've, I've heard one as people tell me that for in him, that's the Son, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yeah. Now I've been told that Godhead is Father, although I've just been told that Godhead is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. If that's true and the hymn is the Son, how can the Godhead, who's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, indwell the hymn, who is the Son? You can't have the Son indwelling the Son. Um, the second problem I have is there are other people who say, well, the hymn is the flesh, the Son is the yeah. flesh. Uh -huh. For in him, the Son of flesh, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, that's the deity, the Father bodily. That seems to be a subordinationist position that basically undeifies the Son. It, it ignores Colossians 1, 16 to 17, where by him, the Son of verse 13, all things were created that are in heaven and on earth. All things were created through him, the Son of verse 13, and for him, the Son of verse 13, and he, the Son of verse 13, is before all things. And in him, the Son of verse 13, all things consist. That's Colossians 1, 16 and 17, yeah. um, which would be the context for Colossians 2. So, my interpretation is Colossians 2 is simply saying the Son, because Jesus is the Son of the Father, 2 John 3, Jesus is not the Father. Yeah. He's the fullness of the deity, Godhead means deity, in a bodily form. In yeah. contrast to the Father, who's the de fullness of deity, who's not in a bodily form. The Father doesn't have a body of flesh. That's the first position. That's the position that I would hold to. And if I'm wrong, there's two positions. Position one, I've been told by certain oneness people, the him is the flesh, and in the flesh dwells all the fullness of the Father, that's the Godhead, the Father bodily, which means that um, the Son, the him, is the Son who's the flesh, who's yeah. not deity, that's a subordinate, subordinationist position. Other oneness people have told me him is the Son, and the fullness of the Godhead, Godhead is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, so you would have the Father, Son and Holy Spirit indwelling the Son. The problem there is how can the Son indwell the Son? So look, I'll, I'll, I'll just listen to what you say because I'm, I'm mighty confused. Um, it seems to be that many Trinitarians and many oneness people actually, they don't actually look at the scriptures at all or church history or the previous theological discussions to me, they're just making stuff up. <laughs> and if you're in a Trinitarian church, you call it the Trinity. If you're in a oneness church, you call it the oneness. Boy, it's confusing. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, let me just ask you. Thanks, thanks for your telephone call anyway. Um, and your name is? Robert. Your name is Robert, right. Yes. And are you presently attending a church? No, no, I live in Plymouth. I, I used to go to an evangelical church. Um, I gave up almost 10 years ago now. Um, because of the scandals by church leaders in evangelical yeah. churches and because I was sick and tired of hearing people say either there's three separate gods, three separate spirits, three thrones in heaven in Trinitarian churches or in Trinitarian churches, I will be told Jesus is the Father over and over again. Um, okay. So I, I, th okay. I thought it's a waste of my time because why should I study the Bible? Uh, I'm a man in my late 50s. 
and yeah. I'm listening to, to kids, kiddie boys, who've got their position because they're the pastor's son or the pastor's daughter or the friend of the church elder or, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, um, so let me, let me see if I can establish something with you. Um, your name is Brian, yeah? Robert. Uh, Robert, sorry. Robert, yes. Uh, uh, do, you still, do you still believe that God exists? Yes. Okay, that's okay. I'm I'm glad for that. Well, uh, um, first, first, first and foremost, right? First and foremost, the the Bible declared clearly in in Timothy that all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, right? Yep. So all Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, according according to the Scripture, right? It is God breathed. It's inspired by God. Okay. Yeah. Now, one thing God, one thing God can't do is to con- is to leave us in a state of confusion when it comes to believing Him. Okay. Yeah. Because the Bible, the Bible said that God is not the author of confusion. So first and foremost, if someone is reading the Scripture and the person um, see, um, seems confused, that's that's not of God because that's not God's intention. Oh no, God no, 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 it's, it's not a case of being confused. These people are utterly, utterly convinced they're right. Yes. But okay. when you speak to different leaders in the same yeah. church, you get yeah. totally different explanations as to who God is, who uh, Jesus yeah, is, yeah, yeah. and what is the okay. way of salvation. And they're all totally convinced that they're right. And the people okay. who listen to them are are basically too biblically illiterate to realize that when you speak to Elder A, he says there's three yeah. separate gods, three separate spirits. Yeah. Elder yeah. B will say, no, there's only one, but Jesus is the Father. Yeah. Uh, and then Elder C will have a different view, and they'll also have different views on salvation. Okay, so let me ask So you, that's the let problem. Me, uh, let me put a question to you. Yeah. What, do we, what do you believe? What do you believe? Do you believe in the oneness of God, or do you believe in the Trinity? Well, again, the problem is these labels are meaningless because if you go to, uh, I've just spoken to um, one, I have spoken to various oneness people and you get yeah. radically different explanations as to what the oneness is. Yes, yes. Uh, as well, I say, okay. a, 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 I, I, there, I don't, no, sorry, I, I don't think the, um, when, when you say um, the labels are, are meaningless, the, I put that, the, 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 the the scripture declared plainly, 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 and I'm coming to you know from a Jewish perspective, right? Where Jesus declared in the book of Deuteronomy, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one." So that's God. That's God declared to Israel that He yeah. is one. Now, so for anybody, whether for anybody, and it doesn't matter which theologian or which intellectual they are. To teach that God is three persons, but Harry says because God have already declared that He Himself is one. So if I teach, if I, if I, if I um, teach you that God is three distinct persons, if you go back yeah. to the Scripture, you look at it for yourself. Can I just God comment? Is saying, well, I am one. So if yeah. I'm teaching that God is three, then yeah. Can I just comment? Um, so go, go ahead. Yeah. Oneness people say God is three manifestations. No yeah. verse in the Bible says God is three manifestations. Any more than okay. there's a Bible verse that says that God is three persons. Okay. Right? Okay, so so, please, so it's rather, it's not a, a good argument to take Deuteronomy 6.4, which simply says God is one God, which many yeah. groups affirm, Trinitarians and oneness, both no, affirm no, no, one no, God. No, no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, you, I'm, you, you said to me that um, the, 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 the oneness of the Trinity around is, is um, I can't remember the term that you used, but what I'm just saying to you, what, and it's not just in Deuteronomy where God declared that. He yeah, I, I know God is one. I don't need a lesson on God being one. I know there's okay. one God. Okay, mm-hmm. one God, he's one spirit, John 4, 24. Uh, let, let me just put something to you. Let me put something to you. I don't know if you've ever read the scripture in Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, beginning from verses 13 to about 21, right? Where the Bible said, Jesus um, traveled, he was on his, on his traveling, he came to Caesarea Philippi, where he asked his disciples, 
whom do men say that I am? The answer they gave him was, some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are Elias, and some say you are one of the prophets. Now bear in mind, bear in mind, these disciples were disciples who Jesus has chosen, right? Mm -hmm. Now he asked them the question, and that was the answer they gave, that some say, they didn't say we say, they said some say. So in other words, some of the people say you are Jeremiah, or you are one of the prophets, or you are Elijah. Yeah, you're going to go to verse 16. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Uh, uh, th that, of course, then, then, then he asked the disciples, he asked his disciples now. So he, he, he took the question away from what the people say, and then he made it personal to his disciples. Who do you say that I have? Now, <coughs> just, just imagine, cause, just, just imagine you've been at the, you're at the scene, you're at the scenery where Jesus asks the question. Now, among the 12, among the 12 um, disciples, the question was asked, just imagine, right, the, the pause and the hush, because none of them knew who Jesus was. Not they didn't knew who he was. Then, as you rightly said, the Bible said, then Peter said, the what? The Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus, then, and flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Okay? Now, here was Jesus um, speaking to Peter on earth, saying to Peter that flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. There are things in the scripture, there are things in the scripture that unless God give you a clear can, can I just can, can I just say, look, the, the issue is, he doesn't say, you are God the Father. He says, you are the son of the living God. And no, I, no, I, I, didn't say, I didn't say Peter say you're the father. What no, Peter he said, says he's the son of the living God. And I believe that Christ said, is the son of the father, 2 John 3. No. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So he's the, Jesus is the son of God, 2 John 3. 2 John 3 also says that Christ is the son of the father. It's, it's another verse. Um, there's, there's no verse that says Jesus is the father. Um, who was manifested in the flesh, it was the Son who was manifested. For this reason, the Son of God was manifested. First okay, John so chapter the, 3, uh, verse 8. Can I, can, I just, can, I just, can I just finish and say that? First yeah. John chapter 3, verse 8. Now, the issue is, I, 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 I don't need a lesson that, you know, there's only one God. I, I know Scripture says there's one God. The issue is, who is the Son of God? It seems to me there are some, certain people who say the Son is the flesh. The Son is not divinity. The Son is not an eternal Son. The okay. Son is not okay. the creator. There are okay. other people who would say the Son is both humanity. Yes, his humanity was created 2,000 years ago. But the Son, as the Son of God, existed together with the Father in eternity. I, I think this would just save an awful lot of time, because I don't want you to try and show me that there's one God and he's one spirit. I, I know that. I accept that. Um, the Bible doesn't say God is three manifestations. The Bible doesn't say God is three persons. Those are assumptions by Trinitarians and oneness Pentecostals, which might be correct or might be incorrect. But the key issue is, uh, as we both agree there's one God, and we both agree that the Father is God, the issue is the Son. Is the Son just the flesh who came into existence 2,000 years ago, because I've been told by Bible Way people, Elder Green, yeah. that the son, some people have said there is an eternal son. These are Bible Way ministers. And the son okay. was eternally with the father as the son. Other people have said, no, 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 the son of God came into existence 2,000 years ago, which I know it's not your church, but David Bernard of the United Pentecostal Church on page 105 of his book, The Oneness of God, says yeah. there was a time when the Son of God did not exist. And David Bernard explains in page 104 of the same book, The Oneness of God, that the sonship began at Bethlehem when mm -hmm. Jesus, the Son, was born in Mary's womb. So to me, that's the issue. Is the Son of God just the flesh and the Father is the deity? Because that's how... <laughs> The person I was speaking to a little while ago, that's how he interpreted Colossians 2.9. 
For in him, the Son, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. And he said, that's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bodily. So the Son is like a bottle, an empty bottle of flesh that you yeah. pour the deity into, and the deity is the, the... Well, he, most oneness people seem to say the deity is the Father. He said the deity, the Godhead deity, was the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. In which yeah. case, if the hymn is the Son, how can you pour the Godhead, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, into the hymn, um, yeah. the, the Son? You're, you're, you know, how can you pour the Son into the Son? Um, okay. Yeah. okay, right, let me ask a question, yeah? Um, the the, the 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 Bible said God is a spirit, which you which I'm sure you've accepted. John four right? twenty four. Yeah. Yes, you accept that God is a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, when 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 Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, the whole of creation was plunged into sin. Would you accept that? Okay, look, I, uh, we, we, I think we're wasting our time. I I know that the issue. No is, no 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 no, yeah, no 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 no. I know no, that. No. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, what I'm, what I'm what I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to establish because you 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 run me and ask you ask me a question. Yeah. Right? So what yeah I'm okay. Trying to I apologize. Fine. Yes. What I'm trying to establish is this, right? Because when we talk in scripture, when we talk in scripture, when I when I'm teaching, sometimes when I'm teaching, what I say to the congregation, look, look at the Bible like this. Yeah. Look at the Bible like this. Look at the Bible as a jigsaw puzzle with three, four hundred bits of pieces and they all jumble up and you throw them on the floor. I said, look at the scripture like that. I said, when you look at it like that, what you see is confusion, are bits and pieces of, of shapes. That's what you will see. But all those bits and pieces and shapes have got their purpose and there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an object in all those shapes and pieces. There's an object there. But because they are flow on the floor, you can't tell what the object is. Okay? I said, only when you start to put them together in their rightful place, let's say the object was a car. As soon as each piece started put in the rightful place, then you will see the formation of a car. Okay? Now, when you're dealing with scripture, when we are dealing with scripture, we... We, 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 first and foremost, we need to ask God, who gave us the word, who he is the one who gave us the word, it's, it is his word. We are the interpreters of the word. But if we, if we, if we look at scripture carefully, the Bible, it interprets itself. All the interpreter needs to do is to put the rightful text in its proper context and we will get the pretext of the scripture, right? So I, 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 I understand where you're coming from, Brian. I understand where you're coming from. Thank you, thank yes? you. Thank you very much. Different, yes. different, 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 um, like if I was baptized in Jesus' name. I, I, I am an apostolic preacher. I believe in the Father, I believe in the Son, I believe in the Holy Ghost. I don't dismiss none of, I, I don't miss, dismiss none of them. What I need to do and ask God to do is to help me to rightly divide the word of truth. If the word of truth is not rightly divided, what we will get is human interpretation and total confusion. Right. So Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Yeah. It talks about God in verse 1, meaning the Father. God who at various times and in different ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, mm -hmm. has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, yeah. whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. The word for worlds is aeonios, it means, it means time itself. So would I be correct in assuming, or am I mistaken, that the Father made the worlds or the universe, in fact time itself, through his Son? The Son was there together with his Father, and the Father made the worlds through the Son. That's paralleled in other verses. Um, the same chapter, Hebrews 10, he, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. I'll read from verse 8. But to the Son, he says, that's the Father speaking. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. So the Father calls the Son God. I believe the Son is God. I believe the Son has two natures. I believe he's eternal deity who's with the Father and the Holy Spirit. 
and I believe that 2,000 years ago a body of flesh was made for the sun. Then in verse 10, Psalm 102 is quoted from the Septuagint. That's why the word Lord is added, because it's a Septuagint re rendering. And you, Lord, this is the Father speaking to the Son, okay? Because verse 8, to the Son he says, and the he is the Father. So Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10, and you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak, you will fold them up. And they will yeah. be changed, but you are the same, and your years will not fail. So, as I understand it, the Father, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, Hebrews yeah. chapter 1, verse 10, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, where creation is ek, the preposition ek is out of the Father, and then it's dear, it's die in the genitive form, die, genitive form of dear, it's through the Son. So creation is ek out of the Father in those three verses, and it's through the Son. So you have three witnesses that creation is ek out of the Father, and it's through the Son, proving that the Son was with the Father at the time of the creation. So, and, and, and you, you are asking me that, that the view that you take, if you are correct, that's what I would believe. Is that the position of the oneness Pentecostals? I, I assume it's not, because David Bernard says, I know he's not your church, but um, uh, there is a tie-up between Bible Way and the United Pentecostal Church. You had a Bible Institute at Lewisham that was jointly run by Bible Way and the UPC. And the official teaching of the UPC in the oneness of God on page 105 is there was a time when the Son of God did not exist. And well, the Son of God came into existence at Bethlehem, according to David Bernard, the general superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church, in his book, The Oneness of God, page 104 uh, and 105. There are other references in that book that talk about the Son coming into existence, there being yeah. a time when the Son did not exist as the Son, Okay, well, I, what, what, what you just, uh, the scripture which you have read, and your explanation, I take the view that you took, yes? So you believe in an, in an eternal son as I do, good. I, 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 I take the same view that you took, because, because the scripture make it very, very clear, very clear. If it, even, even, the, even the book of, of St. John, where it speaks about, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In verse 14 it says, and the same word, which was from the beginning, made flesh. Made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, that flesh that we talk about, the Bible talk about in John, that flesh is, not, is referred to none other than Jesus Christ. So from way back, from way back, from the very beginning, from the very beginning, right, the sonship of God was, all, was always there until, until the time come when God would reveal himself and manifest himself in the sonship and call himself Jesus Christ. And the, the sole purpose of that, uh, Brian, the sole purpose of Robert. that was, was for the redemption and the salvation of the Son of Man. Of the son of man. If, if, Adam, if Adam had not sinned, we wouldn't be having this discussion today. Right, okay. <laughs> so, so to conclude, in John 1.1, 1, 1, you would agree yeah. with me that... Before the creation, there existed the one God who is eternally, personally, and distinctly the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Which is Absolutely. what the Trinity teaches, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are the one Spirit of God, the one being, the one essence of God. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit existed before the creation in eternity as the Father and as the Son and as the Holy Spirit. And this verse, John 1, 1, is simply saying that um, the word, or son, is God. He's not a thought in God's mind, he's God himself. If you yeah. say the word is a thought in God's mind, you're uh, denying the divinity of the word. Absolutely, absolutely. So no, you therefore I, hold to a Trinitarian position that the son is an eternal son, don't you? No, no, no. Um, for, first and foremost, the word, the word Trinity is not, is not, is not scriptural based. Right, but I understand, I understand why theologians use that, that, use, that, use that connotation anyway. I understand why they use it, right? Now, yeah. I think the, the, prob the problem with some 
Trinitarians is when they teach that, that God is three distinctive persons. But you just God. agreed with that. You said before the creation, the yeah. one God existed personally, distinctly, and eternally as the Father and as the Son and as the Holy Spirit. I didn't use the word Trinity. Listen to what I said. I said there's one God, he's one yeah. spirit, one being, one essence. And before the creation, before the, when time itself came into existence, remember Aeonios is used in Hebrews chapter one, verse two. So before the creation of time itself, the one God existed as the Father and as the Son and as the Holy Spirit. And yeah. you agreed with me. So yeah, therefore I, you have the I, Father yeah. and the Son and the Holy Spirit existing yeah, as the you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit before the yeah. creation. Yes, I, I agree with you, but not, not in the form of your three, that the Father is one person, the Son is another person, and the Holy Spirit is another person. Then what are they? Then what are they? Pardon? Then, then what are they? And what does the word person mean in Trinitarian theology, according to you? Because all it means um, is he, that the, the Greek preposition he is used of the Father, not it. So um, the Son is called a he, not an it. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is a he, not an it. That's all that the word person refers to. Because if you, you have to refer to Father as either a he, a she, or an it. Those are the only three options. So, 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 so let, 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 let me just, uh, I, the, what you just explained to me a while ago, do, do you see or do you believe that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, they are three, they are three separate? No, persons. I said distinct. I do not believe they're separate. The Athanasian Creed in its fourth point says not dividing the substance. So that's why I said, I'll say it again. There's one God. He's one spirit, one being, one essence, and he exists personally, distinctly, and eternally as the Father and as the Son and as the Holy Spirit. I used yeah. the word distinctly. I did not use the word separate. I do understand that many people who are leaders in, in Baptist-type churches and Pentecostal-type churches use the word separate. I didn't. I don't believe I, that. I did not say you use the word separate. You yeah. said Distinct, right? Distinct. See, Which I, means I you can distinguish between them. Pardon? Which means you can distinguish between them. And you can eternally distinguish between them. Because creation is ek. The preposition ek is used in 1 Corinthians 8, 6 to say creation is ek. Out of the Father. And it's die, which is dear in the genitive case. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, but the parallel passages in Hebrews 1, 1 and Hebrews 1, 10 mm -hmm. talk about the Son. And actually Colossians is a wonderful verse. Um, Colossians 1, 16 and 17 also uh, is talking about the Son. And it's saying that all things were created through him. Uh, can I yeah. just read it? Um, this is talking about the Son of verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom, that's the Son of verse 13, we have redemption through his, that's the Son of verse 13's blood, the forgiveness of sins. He, the Son of verse 13, is the image of the invisible God. Okay, invisible okay. God is the Father. The firstborn, so this is the Son of verse 13. The Son of verse 13 is the firstborn, which means preeminent or, in, or inheritor uh, over all creation. Uh, Colossians 1.16, for by him, that's the son of verse 13, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him. Now that's exactly what Colossians, um, that's exactly what Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 says, that yeah. God created through the son. And 1 Corinthians 8.6 says creation is ek, it's out of the Father, and it's die, it's through the Son. So all things were created through him, the Son of verse 13, I'm reading Colossians 1.16, and yeah. for him, the Son of verse 13, and he, the Son of verse 13, is before all things, and in him all things consist. So the Son of God yeah. worked together with the Father in the creation why do you call yourself oneness if you believe that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the creator and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yes. 
are the ones who created the universe, then you have three, whether you call them persons or manifestations, yeah. it is really of secondary importance. You have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit extant yeah. as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit from all eternity. Yeah. Father, Son and Holy Spirit are the one God of the Bible. I'm not disputing that. But let me ask you one question. Yeah. Let me ask you one question. What was the purpose of the sonship of God? Um, you mean coming into this world? What, what was the purpose of the sonship of God? Yes. Um, well, the Son was sent into the world by the Father, John 16, 20, 28. And it's the Son who was manifested in flesh, not the Father. We never read God the Father was manifested in the flesh. But we do read, for this reason, the Son of God was manifested. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. The Son was sent because originally there was a covenant between God and man, the old covenant. And the problem was that men couldn't keep their side of the covenant, even even good men, much better than than, than the likes of me, like King 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 David. Um, he couldn't keep the covenant. He sinned with Bathsheba. He had Uriah killed. So these kings and these prophets, even the good kings and the good prophets, even people like Moses and Isaiah and Jeremiah, they couldn't keep man's part of the old covenant. They broke the covenant with God. So. The Father sent the Son into the world, and it's the Son who has a human nature, not the Father. So the Son has two natures. He's fully, eternally Yahweh God, but he also has a human nature. And as a man, a full man with not just a human body, but also a human spirit or soul, um, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, made a covenant with God the Father mediated through the Holy Spirit. That's Hebrews 9 verses uh, 13 to 15. Now this covenant is called the new covenant and it's better than the old covenant. It's very similar to the old covenant. It's a covenant between God and man. It's exactly the same as the old covenant, but it's called the new covenant because it's made by a man who fully kept the law. And that man is Jesus Christ, the son of God. Uh, if I could just start for a yeah. bit, for a bit. Uh, let's go back to the, the whole covenant. What, what, what was the whole covenant consist of? Well, it was a, it, the, old, the old covenant was a covenant between God and men, God yeah. and man, mankind, and man could never keep his side of the covenant. So it was always broken. It was never kept. The covenant was always broken by man. Yeah, and, and what was the what was covenant consistent? Because if you have a covenant, if you have a covenant, it has to be consistent of something. So what, what um, apart from the laws that you talk about, right? Because for me, for me if you look... For me, looking at scripture, looking at scripture, the main purpose of the sonship of God, go back to the old covenant, because the old covenant, it required blood sacrifice. Would you agree? Yes, that's why Christ died on the cross and okay. shed his blood on the cross. Uh, the, the blood is a, is a reference to the life. It's a, it's a, it's a symbolic of Christ's life that was, exactly. was given. I should, have, I should have added that, Elder Green. You made a very, very good point there. So in the new the covenant... The covenant required blood sacrifice. Yeah. That was the only way Israel, who was God's people, who were brought out of Egypt, right? And the Bible talks about very clearly in the book of Hebrews, once a year, the priests had to kill that innocent sacrifice, go into the Holy of Holies beyond the veil, offer that sacrifice, and if God accepted the sacrifice, he returned back to the people, and the people's sin would be forgiven for one whole year. That was the main purpose of the whole Testament covenant. Now, after so God made, a, Jeremiah talks about God will, God will bring forth a new covenant, right? So yeah. when we talk about the sonship, the sonship of God, the sonship of God, God is a spirit, a spirit hath not flesh and blood. Would you agree? Yes, yeah, John, John 4, 24, the word spirit is singular. Okay, God is a spirit, and a, a spirit hath not flesh and blood. Now, if you look at yourself, Brian, I don't know if, I don't know if you're married or if you're, if you're children, I don't know, but I'm married, I have three children, right? Yeah. 
my, my name is my name is Baltimore. That's my name, Baltimore. Oh, I thought it was Green. I, I thought you were yeah. Elder Green. Right. It says I, District Elder Green at Northampton. Okay. All right. Yes, that's okay. right. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so I'm going to use myself as uh, um, if I could just demonstrate something to you. Okay? Yes. Yes. In relation to in relation to the spirit, the Father, the Son, right? Because I I am I am I'm, I'm a father. I've got a fa I've got a father's responsibility to my children. I'm I'm the brother. I'm a brother of my brothers. I also got a different title. So as a father, my, as a father, I've got a t I've got a role to play toward my children, right? As as a brother, I also play a role to my brothers. And also, I'm an uncle, um, I'm, a son, I'm a son of my father, right? But that doesn't make me three different, two different, um, two different persons. What it does, I can operate, the same person operate in three different roles. But you've just disagreed with that. You've just, you've just disagreed with that. I told you about half an hour ago that creation is ek, it's out of the Father in 1 Corinthians 8, 6. And then yeah. a different preposition, die, is used. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ, who in Hebrews yeah. chapter 1, verse 2, in Colossians 1, 16 and 17, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10, is identified as the Son. So creation is ek, out of the Father, and it's through the Son. Yeah. Now, you have, you, have three, you have three, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who are eternally extant, eternally existing as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I haven't gone into the Holy Spirit because it complicates the issue a little bit more, but Job 33, 4 uh, talks about the Holy Spirit being active in creation. So creation is through the Father. Sorry, it's, I'll start again. Uh, that's a mistake. It's out of the Father and it's through the Son. I have to go into the other room. Just a second. Just a second. There's somebody else here. I'll just go into the other room for a second. Uh, there's somebody else in the other room. Um, I don't have access to my Bible. I just have to uh, talk. So you said earlier that you agreed with me that um, the one God of the Bible was personally, distinctly and eternally existing as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I understand how you can be a father and you can be a son and you can be a, a, a husband all at the same time. But you can't use that an analogy on the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit of the Bible because um, Scripture is adamant in saying that there, are, it, there is an eternal distinction between the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Creation is ek, out of the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, and it's die, it's through the Son, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, which means that there is a, you can distinguish between them. Creation is not out of the Son, it's out of the Father. And creation is not through the Father, it's through the Son. You can, you can distinguish between them. When you refer to the Father, when you refer to the Father, right? The, the Father of Jesus Christ. What do you see the Father of Jesus Christ as? Sorry, could you say that again? Yeah, when you refer to the Father, right? Yeah. The Father of Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. No? yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you refer to the Father, yeah. right, what do, what do you see the Father is? Well, the Father is Yahweh God. Yahweh God is eternally, personally, and distinctly the Father, and, and, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. And, he, and, he is, and Yahweh God is a spirit, right? Yes, one spirit, John four twenty four singular. And that one spirit is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You okay, can distinguish okay. between them. Okay. You can, you can distinguish between them. I mean, for instance, John 17, 5, the Son speaks, and he, it is the Son who speaks, because in John 17, 1, I haven't got my Bible in front of me, I'm working from memory, he says, Father, glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. So it's the Son speaking, and in John 17, 5, he says, you know, restore unto me the glory I had with you before the world was. So you have a distinction there. You have the Son having glory with the Father in eternity, from before the creation, the glory I had with you before the world was. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not disputing that. Yeah. Point. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, go back, I'll go back to the question. Yeah. 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 When you refer to the, uh, 
Father, you refer to that God, his spirit, Yahweh, as I said, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, the, the Bible, the Bible speaks clearly that a, a spirit hath not flesh and blood. Yep. Okay. Now, so, if go back to the Old Testament, where the whole covenant, the old covenant, yep. it required a blood sacrifice. Yes. Now, if God be the Spirit, God is the Spirit, and it has my flesh and blood, and for you, for me, and the whole world to receive redemption, God needs a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice, wouldn't you say? Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Now, how did God manifest that blood sacrifice? Well, the Father, who existed in eternity with the Son and the Holy Spirit, it yes. says in John, John 16, 28, that he sent his son into the world. So the father sent somebody other than himself, whether you call that a different manifestation or a different person. Um, all we're referring to is the fact that the father is a he in eternity and the son is a he in eternity, not an it. The father's not an it, the son is not an it, the father is a he. The scripture calls the father a he and the scripture calls the son a he. John 16, 28 says the Father sent the Son into the world. And the um, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, for this reason, the Son of God was manifested. So it was the Son of God who was eternally with the Father, who was manifested for the purpose of redemption. And that redemption is so he could, you're quite correct, I should have added that. So the Son could shed his blood upon the cross. And at the point of redemption, he makes a covenant with God the Father mediated through the Holy Spirit. So that is the new covenant of Hebrews 9, uh, 13 to 15. The, fa the, the Father makes a covenant with his Son who's shedding his blood upon the cross. And that covenant is mediated through the Holy Spirit for the purpose of saving mankind under the New Testament uh, or New Covenant. Uh, ha have I explained your question uh, uh, well, partially. Uh, uh, let, let me let me let me yeah. go, let me back. Yeah. Let me go back. When you refer to the Father, when you refer when you refer to the Father of Jesus, you re, you re refer to Yahweh, the Eternal Spirit, right? No, I'm, when I say Father, I mean Father. Father means Father, and Son means Son. Yahweh yeah. is eternally, personally, and distinctly the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Yahweh okay. Yahweh doesn't become the Father. Yahweh doesn't become the Son. There isn't a point in time when the Son didn't exist, as David Bernard says on page 105 of his book, The Oneness of God. Okay, the Son has always existed, and he's always existed together with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yahweh is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you see, I'm not disputing that. What I'm, what I'm looking at, what I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking at that... Um, the whole plan, the whole plan of salvation as far as God is concerned, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible said, known unto God of all his works from the beginning of the creation. As I've, as I, as I've used the example earlier on in regards to when, you, when it comes to read, read the scripture, yeah. as I've used the example about the, the jigsaw puzzle, yeah. because you and I, we can spend the whole day talking um, and trying to sort of, uh, you know, to put things in their, in, their, in, their, in their proper context and all of this sort of thing. We can spend all day talking, right? But, as I've, as I've used the example regarding the, the, um, the, 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 the jigsaw puzzle, I believe that the Bible never contradicts itself. I believe it is the Word of God. I believe all the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation was inspired by God. And so, every scripture, every bit and pieces, as you start to put them in their correct place, in their correct places, right, you will get the, you will get the picture. Now, mm -hmm. we're, we're living in a world where we've got so many different religious beliefs and so much conflict in, um, in, in Christendom. In Christendom. Um, Jesus declared, when Jesus came, Jesus declared that to the Jews, to the Jews, that I am the way, the truth, and the life, 
Again, he uses this word father. No one cometh unto the father but through me. That's somebody other than himself, isn't he? No one comes to the father. He's not saying, I am the father. The son is not the father. That's, that's somebody other than himself. No, but, 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 but in, other scripture, um, in other scripture, Brian, Jesus, Jesus Robert, said, Robert. Oscar, I am in the father and the father in me. Right, that's John right. fourteen ten. And he says, I am in the Father, yes. and the Father is in me. Do you believe that the Father is in the Son, and do you also believe the Son is in the Father? Of course. It's Scripture. It's, it's, it's Scripture. How can the Son be in the Father? But Jesus declared it himself. Yeah, but how? How can the Son be in the Father? If the Jesus Son is the flesh, how can the flesh be inside the Father? Uh, uh, do you, there's a Scripture in the Bible, of, um, I think it's in the book of John, after Jesus' resurrection... After Jesus' resurrection, the Bible said that um, he, he appeared to disciples and Thomas, so before that, the Bible, Thomas said to Jesus, well, show us the Father and so we can be satisfied because you, you've been talking about this Father, we've never seen him. But you you're to referring to John 14, 9. You're referring and Jesus, to... Jesus said, Thomas... He has seen me, has seen the Father, John Father, 49. Father, you see me. Right, so are you saying Jesus is the Father? Because you've just been agreeing with me for three quarters of an hour. I said Jesus Christ is the Son, he's not the Father. So what is your position? Do you believe Jesus is the Son, or do you believe Jesus is the Father, or is Jesus both? I mean, I need to, this is the thing, you see. What is your position? What is the oneness position of Bible Way Church I, on who Jesus is? I, is Jesus I, the Son, or is Jesus the Father? You are asking me, what is my position? Yeah. What is my position? I'm telling you, from Scripture, Jesus himself declared to Thomas... Yeah, to John 14, 9, I know the verse. I, I know but, the but, verse. But, 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 what is Jesus saying to Thomas then? If you see me, you see the Father. He's what saying he's saying? not the Father in John 14, 9. What is Jesus saying to Thomas? He's saying to Thomas he is not the Father in John 14, 9, because he uses... He would have spoken Aramaic... But uh, the Bible. Have you read, have you read that the scripture? Can, can, can I just? I know the verse. John fourteen nine. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. The verse. Can you, explain, can you explain to me what? I will means? gladly do that. But are you okay. saying from John fourteen nine that Jesus is the Father? Or not? What What is your position? If you're going to throw a verse at me, I'll answer it. I'll do my no, best. No, no, no. no you are but, asking me. You're asking me. My, I'm, I'm, I am. And I'm dealing with scripture. Yeah, what I know, and I will answer it. I'll do the best to answer it. But I need to know, are you quoting this verse to me because you believe Jesus is the Father? Is that what you're claiming? But, but Jesus declared, he, he declared blessed to Thomas. He made it very clear to Thomas. I am the Father, Father, and if you see the Father, you see me. Right, so are you saying that Jesus is the Father? Of course I am saying Jesus is right. the Father, yes. Right, okay. And you understand that I believe that Jesus is not the Father? Uh, no, I don't know. I, I believe that Jesus is the Son of the Father, 2 John 3. Yes. And I believe that uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, For this reason the Son of God was manifested. Yes. So Jesus is the Son. It was not yes. the Father who was manifested. Yes. When you look at Jesus, you're looking at the Son. You're not looking at the Father. And I have said repeatedly, and you kept on agreeing with me, this is the trouble with the oneness belief, you kept on agreeing with me. I said, there's one God, and he's personally, distinctly, and eternally the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I do not believe the Son is the Father. I do not believe Jesus is the Father. You kept agreeing with me. Now that you make it clear, and, and that's your belief based on your understanding of Scripture. Right? Can I answer John 14, 9? Right. Now, I'm telling you, as, as I'm telling you, from Scripture, from Scripture... As I, as I, I will go back to um, I will go back to the, the jigsaw puzzle which I've used before, right? That when you start to put the bits and pieces together. Yeah, yeah. Can we look at John fourteen nine? I've, 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 I've he has seen me, has seen the Father. Can we look at that verse? Yeah, go, go ahead. yeah. I, I I'm actually standing in a cupboard because another guy's in the community room talking on his phone, so I don't have my Bible in front of me. John fourteen nine. Jesus would have spoken in Aramaic, but the Bible, as you know, is recorded in Greek. Do you know the Greek the word that's used for see there in John 49? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So, so I'm, I'm going to second. I'm going to second. 
So you are saying to me that when Jesus when Jesus was speaking when Jesus was speaking to Thomas and his disciples, he was speaking Aramaic. Uh, he was probably be speaking in Aramaic. That's the language that fishermen would have used, fishermen and tax collectors. It would have been Aramaic. That's the language they spoke in the in the Holy Land in those days. But it's recorded when, in Greek. When, 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 if you talk about the Greek, yes, I will take that from you. But you see, Aramaic, because when Jesus was born, when Jesus was born, the Greek language was a common language of the yeah. Well, let's let let all right. Let, let's just deal with the the Greek text of John fourteen nine. Can we do that, please? Uh, I Can I address what? John fourteen nine? He who has seen me has seen the Father. I'm in a second. I am, I'm actually pushed for time. Could I please address John fourteen nine? Oh, can Perfect. I just? Can, you, you've 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 made a point. The word for see. There's two words for see. There's horeo and there's blepo. Blepo means to see with the eye. For instance, I am blepoing my mobile phone as I speak to you in a cupboard. I am blepoing the cupboard. It means I'm seeing it with my eye. There's another word for see. In English, we just say see. It's horeo, and it means to understand. Like I can horeo how the atom works. I can horeo how quantum physics works. I don't actually see it with my eye. I understand it. So in John 14, 9, when Jesus says, he who has seen me has seen the Father, the Greek word that's used there is horeo, and it just means to understand. He who has horeoed me, understood, understood me, has understood the Father. So Jesus is actually saying he's not the Father. Because he uses horeo and not blepo. If Jesus were the Father, he'd say, He who has blepoed me has blepoed the Father. And he doesn't. He uses the complete opposite word, horeo. He who horeo understands me, horeo understands the Father. Because Jesus is not the Father, he's the Son of the Father, 2 John 3. And Jesus is the Son manifested in flesh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He's not the Father, sir. Um, um, Brian, um, I mean, as I said, we, we can spend the whole morning and talk about Scripture and talk about Jesus and the Father. But I yeah, the tr trouble is you don't actually believe in the deity of the Son of God at all. You're playing games uh, no, no, with the word Jesus and Son and Father, but actually, in reality, you believe, as David Bernard does, the Son came into existence at a point in time. You're actually a subordinationist, but you hide it behind Jesus. Jesus is God, by which you mean the Father is called Jesus and the Father is God, and you'll say, yes, Jesus is, a, is, Jesus is creator. You might even, you have said the Son is creator. You don't actually believe that. Uh, but I, you I, believe I, Jesus I, is the Son, and Jesus is the Father, and so you can say, yeah, G the Son is creator, but what you mean is actually, the Son is Jesus, Jesus is the Father, and it's the Father who's the creator, because the Son, he, he don't exist. He don't exist until Bethlehem. That's when the Son came into existence. I, I, my, final, my final word to you, yeah. My final word to you. Um, I am, I am happy. I am settled, and I thank God for the knowledge that He has given me in regarding to my salvation. How I stand and walk with God. I am I'm not looking for any more truth because I believe I have found the truth. I am, um, I'm, I'm living it. I will die in it. This truth is that Jesus is the Father. That's your truth, isn't it? Jesus is the Father. By the grace of by the grace of God, when the rapture takes place, I will rapture with him. Do you believe are, Jesus is the Father? There are some things. There are some things here, and you and I, we, we can talk from now until it comes yeah. home. But, there are some things now where the Bible said clearly that we see in part and we know in part. Yeah. But when that which is perfect is come. That which we see in part will be done away with. So we can we can talk, we can argue, and we can say what you like or what I like. The fact of the matter is, there are some things that neither you or the greatest theologian will never see. Elder we... Green, it's a very simple question. Is Jesus no, 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 the no, Father? No, no, no. Do you I'm, believe I'm, Jesus is the Father? I believe that Jesus is the Father, he is the Son, and he is the Holy Ghost, yes. Which scripture says Jesus is the Father? Because I can't I, find I, I, one. I all right. Well, all right. Well, thank you for your time. Um, I've got a, I've you got a one o'clock appointment. There is no five minutes to right. Thank you. Thank you. Ready. Thank you, sir, for your time. Bye, sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye.